The Dayton City Commission meeting will now come to order. Would you please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Would you please bow your head? Dear Lord, fill us with the courage to lead and serve our community proudly. Help us to lead in the example you have so graciously shown us. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ms. Lavender, may we please have the roll call? Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioners Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. <coughs> may I have a motion to uh, authorize the absence of Commissioner Williams from this week's meeting? So moved, Your Honor. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to authorize the absence of Commissioner Williams from this week's meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I have a motion to approve the minutes of the April 16th meeting. So moved, Your Honor. Uh, second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the April 16th meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Lavender, are there any communications or petitions? There are none, Your Honor. Okay, great. Well, this morning I'd like to uh, call uh, Ms. Terry Williamson of the Dayton Rotary to the podium to discuss uh, the Rotary's work with education and uh, become a city of learners, part of the city of learners. Oh, can Kelly come, come on up? Yeah. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Mayor Whaley, commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to be here to present Dayton Rotary and our commitment to the young people of the Dayton community. In 1913, Delayed by a few months by the Great Flood, the Dayton Rotary Club was chartered as the 47th Rotary Club in the world. <laughs> Today, there are over 30,000 clubs all over the world. So that shows you the um, longevity of our existence. From the beginning of our club, the Dayton Rotary has been involved with our young people. Dayton Rotary helped to start the local Boy Scout movement in the Miami Valley. It was also instrumental in the development of the YMCA's Camp Kern. Over the years, Rotary has supported a variety of educational initiatives. For many years, Dayton Rotary has provided classic literature books to each third grade student and dictionaries to each fifth grade student in the Dayton Public Schools. This project is being transformed this year to join efforts with Learn to Earn. We will provide books to each and every student at both Meadowdale um, Elementary and E.J. Brown to have as their own to encourage them to be part of our city of learners. In 2006, Dayton Rotary began our Rotary Reads program at Louise Troy Elementary. One day each month, a team of Rotarians read to the students at Louise Troy. By reading to the same class each month, the students and the Rotarians are developing bonds of friendship <coughs> as well as sharing the gift of reading. Kelly Lehman took her third grade class one step further. It took a great part of this year, but each student wrote about what they liked about school, provided illustrations, and with Kelly's help, have published their very own book, Be Kind, Be Respectful, Be Responsible, Be Honest. Each of these third grade students can now proudly say that they are a published author. <laughs> it is my pleasure on behalf of Kelly and the Dayton Rotary Club to present Mayor Whaley with a copy of this book. Thank you. Uh, and I want to say I got to see the book early and it's earlier and it's pretty fantastic. It has great, I want to share with the commissioners, it's got great pictures that they were illustrators in as well, mm -hmm. as you can see. And so I'll pass it around. And then Kelly was nice enough also to make an extra one that we're going to be sending to Mrs. Obama. So that way that the students, we hope, will get a response from Mrs. Obama for the great work that they're doing. Uh, for certainly what Rotary has done really focus around reading and focus in city schools makes a big difference and mm -hmm. we, we we certainly appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Lavender, do you want to? 
the Certificate of Appreciation, City of Learners, Certificate of Appreciation, Dayton Rotary, Rotary Reads Program. The Dayton City Commission wishes to recognize and commend your commitment to education and creating a more educated workforce in our community. Your efforts will serve to inspire others to join the movement to make Dayton a city of learners. And the certificate is signed by the mayor and the city commissioners. Thank you. And as we're all members of Rotary, we're very <coughs> excited about all the great work you're doing. So all thank right. you. And thanks for your leadership, Terry, on the Education thank Committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Great. I would like to call Reverend Leonard Sankey to the podium to discuss the Inner Church Holiness Convention being held in Dayton today. <coughs> Mayor Whaley, members of the commission, good morning. Good morning. And it is an honor for me to be here. I represent the Inner Church Holiness Convention and that has been meeting in Dayton since 1976. And so we are looking back on 38 years of holding our meetings here. We had already come to Dayton when we found in a national magazine this comment that Dayton has the best possible combination of location, cost, and facilities in the Midwest. So we knew we had made the right choice by coming here. You, in turn, have made us welcome and our convention has become a family-centered convention because of what we sense in the Dayton community. In a few moments, uh, there will be 350 children gathered. A little bit later, something over 600 teenagers. And a little bit later, 700 women gathered, plus a larger congregation uh, gathered in the convention center. We continue to come back because of those items that I mentioned a moment ago. We also particularly continue to come back because of the personnel in the convention center who have done such a fantastic job of welcoming us and making our convention possible. I would like to present to Mayor Whaley and the members of the commission copies of our daily magazine which we produce while we are here. Mm -hmm to let our people know what's happening, uh, to give a picture of our, uh, our operation and our activities, and you can certainly keep those and look through them when you have time to do so. But I do want to express my appreciation, especially to uh, the people that we are working with now, including Leslie Barrow and Kathy Shearer, who have welcomed us and made our stay very, very welcome here in the Dayton area. Mayor Whaley, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, and uh, thank you also for your response to us. Thank you, Reverend. Mm -hmm. Any comments, commissioners? Reverend, we're always glad to have you and your folks here. Uh, we're glad you feel welcome. We're going to continue to try to make you feel welcome, and we hope that you come back for years and years to come. We are planning to come back. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Lavender. We have a <coughs> proclamation from the Office of the Mayor of the City of Dayton, Ohio, <coughs> whereas two ministers met in the summer of 1951 to discuss bringing people of different churches together, to worship together, to pray together, and to refresh their spirit. And whereas these discussions led to the formation of the Inner Church Holiness Convention. And whereas the first annual convention of the Inner Church Holiness Convention occurred in March 1952 in Cincinnati, Ohio, and subsequent conventions met in various locations as partic participation grew. And whereas, in 1976, the Inner Church Holiness Convention began meeting in Dayton, Ohio at the Dayton Convention Center. And whereas, the Inner Church Holiness Convention has met at the Dayton Convention Center annually because Dayton offers a pleasing combination of meeting facilities, professional and friendly staff, quality lodging accommodations and restaurants in an affordable and family friendly environment. And whereas the 2014 convention will be held April 22nd through the 24th and will bring together 3,500 children, teens, women and men from various churches for worship programs and services and highlights the work of members of the Papua New Guinea Bible Church. Now, therefore, I, Nan Whaley, Mayor of the City of Dayton, do hereby proclaim April the 22nd through the 24th, 2014, as Inner Church Holiness Convention Days in Dayton. The proclamation is signed by the mayor and affixed with the city seal.
Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity of meeting with you this morning. Reverend, Thank we're you. so glad you're here in Dayton, and we're so glad that you've been here for such a long period of time. Thank I hope you. you enjoy the weather and have a great time in Dayton. Thank you so again. much. Thank you. Mr. Reardon, I understand you would like to discuss the new electric char car charging station in the parking lot. <coughs> Please yes. proceed. And as, as Commissioner Joseph waved his hands in excitement, please I'm proceed. I'm quite excited. I'd like to ask uh, Ramona Carver and Brian Talby to come up. They have a short uh, presentation and video they want to show. Ms. Carver. Good morning, <coughs> Mayor, Commissioners, Manager, Clerk. My name is Ramona Carver, and with me this morning is Brian Talby, and we are here to uh, introduce the two new electric charging stations that have been installed in the municipal garage next to City Hall. These level two chargers are located at the top of the entry ramp and are free for anyone who uses our facility. We are one of 105 public electric car charging stations in the state of Ohio. And in an effort to encourage the public to use alternative fuels such as electric, we are providing free charging for a while. In making this investment, the city took advantage of a Clean Fuels Ohio grant, which paid for half of the installation. The other 50% match was uh, through the Economic <coughs> Development Managed DPNL stipulation funds. So we are, in, in, uh, we are happy to be able to do this uh, during Earth Week. And, um, we're glad to be able to provide this service for people who work, visit, or pass through the city of Dayton. And um, Brian has put together a short video on how to use <coughs> the um, charging station downtown. Great. Good morning, Mayor Commissioners. Brian Talby, okay. Division of Public Affairs. Uh, pub public Affairs staff has put together this very short how-to video about the charging station. And after we watch this, you can ask us any questions you have. Here we go. As part of the Dayton Regional Green Initiative, the City of Dayton has installed electric vehicle charging stations. They're easy to access. Located just inside the municipal parking garage on 3rd Street next to City Hall. A short walk to restaurants, businesses, and government offices. Charging is free. Only normal parking rates apply. Simply plug in, go have a bite to eat or run an errand, and for as little as $2 an hour, come back to a charged car that will take you to your next destination. For directions or additional information, use the PlugShare app or visit PlugShare.com. We should mention you should have an electric car. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> And by the way, that uh, reference to the PlugShare app, uh, I'm going to bring it up here. You can go to PlugShare.com or the PlugShare app on your smartphone and uh, search on Dayton, and it'll show you a map of the charging stations in the Dayton area, including ours at, at the city garage. Great. Okay. Mr. Joseph. I'm going to jump right in. Yeah. That's okay. I, I love that we've done this. I spoke to the city manager. Actually, I think I might have spoke to the previous city manager, too, about possibly doing this. And uh, everything came together nicely, the grants. Uh, so we were able to do it very cheaply for us. Uh, and it's nice to be able to do something, and I, I've, I've mentioned this for other things before, after years of austerity, it's nice to be able to do something that really plans for the future, maybe even uh, assist in pushing that future a little bit. To be able to provide electric <coughs> power uh, for electric power cars is something that not most municipalities haven't done. I'm glad we're on the leading edge here. Um, and one argument that I want to make uh, very quickly is people say, uh, why electric? You know, right now, if you plug in uh, uh, somewhere and charge your car with electricity, that electricity comes from coal or a, a dirty source of power anyway. Uh, the argument is if you get people using electric cars as the sources of electricity get cleaner, uh, your, your, the, the cost of the power will be, be cleaner, the, the car will be powered by cleaner stuff. So it's one of the many steps that has to happen down the road to, to reduce carbon. So uh, it's a great thing you're doing. I'm glad that uh, we're able to jump in and do this. It's nice to be able to do something innovative and plan for the future that when we haven't had many opportunities until now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. now, I think Ramona mentioned that this was uh, installed through grant funding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, tell us where, where else, like in the city or the county, there's electric. I don't have an electric car, so I don't know where the mm -hmm. plug-ins are. Where are the other plug-ins? Um, there are several um, north and south of downtown. Go back to that map if I can find it. <coughs> car dealerships. I don't see mostly it here now. In town. Car dealerships. There are several, especially around the airport. Okay. Uh, 
there was a company uh, near uh, UD Arena called the Book, Book Factory, I believe. They provide a charging station. So if you go to plugshare.com, mm -hmm. are It'll all the all sites all the sites there? Sure, they're all right there. Okay, great. Well, I'm just really pleased mm -hmm. that we're taking this initiative, like Commissioner Joseph said. Congratulations mm -hmm. to you all for looking for the grant funding and recognizing that the initiative for us to be green is something that's a priority for the city. And this is a great example of how we can try to th have people think differently about their their driving. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you. Thank you, Mr. Reardon. Ms. Lavender, are there any additions, deletions, or comments to the calendar? I have none, Your Honor. Mr. Reardon, I'm sure you have comments, additions, or deletions. I have no additions or deletions, Your Honor, but I would like to call a couple of staff up to talk about several of the items. I'd like to ask Mr. Danish to come up <coughs> and talk about items A1, A1, B1, and B2. There are three separate contracts to a law firm, and just wanted him to clarify what we're doing and why. Mr. Danish? Good morning, Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager, Clerk, John Danish, Law Department. Good morning. We have uh, three items with the law firm of Ice Miller, items A1, B1, and B2. Uh, each deal with a different uh, subject matter and have a different fund code. That's why there's different uh, purchase orders. The first one is an item out of the, uh, that we're dealing with in the Aviation Department to finish up some easement issues that uh, involve regulatory issues before the PUCO and uh, Vectrin. And that should be done soon, but we still have to finish that up this year. B1 is an item to deal with our uh, fiber network that we're still trying to put together into a uh, semi-commercial product. And they'll walk us through both the re regulatory issues and the contract issues as they've dealt with other cities on uh, similar products. And then B2 is uh, legal services for aggregation. Uh, in addition to coming up with the bidding and the agreement, we also have to walk through regulatory processes to uh, complete that as well. And that's, uh, in essence, what the three are. Any questions? Well, I'm just glad to see on B1 and B2, oh, all of them actually, but specifically B1 and B2, that the deadline on these are 12:31:14. 14 <coughs> So I'm assuming that we'll see some movement, for example, on fiber and ag this year, correct? We certainly hope so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the goal. So I'm happy to see that. Yeah, thank you. And <clears throat> I'd also like to call Aaron Sorrell up to talk about items uh, number three and five. Mr. Sorrell. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Good morning. Clerks. Good morning. <clears throat> Oops. So item number three is a, a advance with uh, MVHO for our Shelter Plus Care Program. Um, we are asking for approval for spending authority of uh, $700,000. We don't think we will use all of that, but uh, as, as occurred last year, we still don't have our contracts for the Shelter Plus Care uh, program from HUD yet. Although what is different is we do know our award amount. So that's positive, so we're hoping that we will uh, have contracts in hand by July. Uh, we made a few adjustments this year to reduce the, uh, the amount of the advance that the city may um, have to, to undertake, including moving our start dates uh, back to backwards to or forward, I should say, to uh, May 1st rather than you know right after the end of the year. So that should be helpful. Um, the next item is our REAP uh, app, uh, <coughs> submission to the county. Uh, we are putting 45 properties uh, through. Um, we don't give you a lot of context, I think, uh, or I haven't in the past. So just to recap some 2013 numbers, we had 260 applications in 2013, which was a 21% increase over the uh, previous year. And we transferred 142 properties to, um, to willing property owners, uh, which was a, almost a 50% increase over the previous year. So the, the volume is increasing, the, um, and the number of applications is certainly increasing, uh, despite the fact that we really aren't promoting this uh, program other than word of mouth or, or informally. We don't have a lot of printed material and, or an ad campaign, so uh, that is helpful. So, any questions? How's the pipeline going on the timing of them going through the pro program? The, the pipeline is, it's better. Um, it has certainly helped that uh, Maggie Carper is at the prosecutor's office because that has dramatically sped up the, the, the case filings. Uh, and then once the cases are filed, it's pretty automatic. Um, so that has helped. We're still, you know, it could be a little quicker, but uh, it will probably honestly decrease a little bit or increase the timing with REAP because 
Uh, the NIP program through the land bank, that is going to be a priority for everybody, the, the demolition program where we have to own them. Own, right. So those properties are going to take uh, a little more uh, priority than the standard REAP application, but we'll try to, to um, fan them in uh, as equitably as we can. Any questions? No. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sorrell. Okay. That's all I had, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, commissioners, do you have any comments on the city manager's recommendations? Yeah, I did. I just had a, I want some clarification on uh, item number two here. I guess I just, I hadn't seen uh, this uh, Community Reinvestment Act ordinance displayed this way uh, on other projects and stuff. You know, so why, why are we printing the public the CIA ordinance as part of our, uh, our business? Commissioner, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Sorrell to come back and give you some background on that. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Um, item number three is a payment of voucher to Cox Publishing. The, the CRA that was published was for the Webster Station um, Community Reinvestment Area. Specifically, it was put in place uh, for the new Water Street project, and the because the district was so large, the actual ordinance and legal boundaries and the legal description was significantly longer than we had anticipated. Uh, and so we had a December deadline to get that published and approved by the city commission and therefore uh, we ended up having a payment of voucher because we didn't have uh, enough money remaining at the end of the year on our existing POs with uh, Dayton Daily News. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other <coughs> questions on city manager recommendations? Good. Okay, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Number one, on, and I'm asking <coughs> for it, and actually on item number nine, uh, this is this, or maybe you can have Mr. Danish come. This is the annual liquor period, correct? So um, I don't know if the commissioners remember, but every year we have liquor season, as I like to call it, where we come and object to uh, licenses <laughs> that we want to object to normally like around five to seven in the past few years this year only one mr danish why don't you come up is that okay to give an update on <coughs> how come there's only one and how nice and easy liquor season is this this year good morning again yes liquor season is wonderful this year <laughs> uh as always every year uh, at the start of the year we begin to review the uh, liquor licenses throughout the city we have 300 plus liquor licenses in uh, the city of dayton <gasps> We start with asking the uh, uh, priority boards and different uh, neighborhood associations to give their input on anything that uh, they're concerned about. That is, goes through planning and community development, and then it's uh, passed to the police department that does an investigation to determine what the call load and various things are. Then it uh, comes to the law department to, for review, and we meet with representatives of the commission office and the city manager's <coughs> office in planning and community development. This year, we only had one establishment that uh, met the criteria for an objection, and that is the uh, cell block, which is also known as the Aquarius. Uh, and the main reason for that is, is that it is a continuation of last year's objection. We objected to uh, four places last year. We had the vault, which is closed. We had Webster Station, which is, if not closed, in the process of closing and doing a property transfer. And then we had Loch Ness, which is closed. So all that we have left is the uh, Selbach Aquarius, and uh, that's our recommendation for this year. Great. Well, Any I want to commend the uh, law department and police and the neighborhoods, uh, because to have that kind of record and being really focused and the ones that we object to do become closed, I think shows the power of this process and really straight streamlining and using this process well, so I appreciate your all's leadership in that effort. I agree, Mayor. It's, it's a what, seven or eight or ten year process now, bringing the numbers down from, there were pages and pages of these a few years ago, uh, through the, the good work of the police, working with the, the establishments, uh, the neighborhoods, uh, you and the law department, you all have done a really good job of reaching out, and uh, we knew it was going to be a long-term project when we started it, and this is, uh, this is great to see just one this year, right. so thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great. I'm pretty sure we have some um, speakers that want to speak on informal re resolution number 885. So That is correct. We so have a total of three. A three. So yeah. why don't we let them speak and then we'll make some comments. Okay. At this time, I would like to state there is a three-minute time limit. 
As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. And at that time, I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have the three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on. Then you will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you'll be asked to cease your comments and to take your seat. At this time, I call forward Ms. Mercedes Guy. You want to state your name and address for the record, and then you may begin, OK? OK. My name is Mercedes Guy, and my address is 1311 Coomler Avenue. OK, you may begin. My name is Mercedes Guy. I worked at Walmart for almost three years. My pay rate after three years was only $8.90 an hour. This meant that there were times where I did not make enough money to pay my bills and had to rely on my parents for support. Many of my coworkers also struggled to pay bills to the point that some of them lost their homes or were forced to rely on food stamps and government assistance to pay their <coughs> bills even though they worked full time. Raising the wage would allow workers, working people, to pay their bills, stay in their homes, and build stronger communities. No one who works hard in this country should have to choose between buying food for their children or paying their bills. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. <coughs> Thank you. Clay Dixon. <coughs> State your name and Good morning. Clay Dixon, 700 Torrington Place, uh, Dayton, Ohio. You and I'm here this morning representing the Miami Valley Organizing Collaborative, which is a community-based organization consisting of faith-based, organized labor, community organizations, and civil rights organizations. But we're here this morning to, to thank you for uh, bringing forward the uh, resolution increasing the federal minimum wage. On uh, March the 13th, and uh, Commissioner Mills was there as well as the first man of Dayton <laughs> to, uh, to really uh, support the minimum wage. <clears throat> there we had over 150 in attendance. And we heard testimony just like you heard from Mercedes. Uh, people working very hard, some of them working two jobs and still can't make ends meet in the city of Dayton. So a lot of the people that we are supporting, that you're supporting, is very important to, for the tax base of the city of Dayton. So again, we want to commend you for your support of increasing the federal minimum wage. And we have uh, cards that a lot of people sign in support of increasing the minimum wage, in which we will uh, present to Congressman uh, Turner. Why I'm also here, I would like to uh, uh, say that we stand shoulder to shoulder with you in supporting issue six, the increase of the earning tax. We understand that if you are going to support issues of the people in the city of Dayton that are most in need, that you need resources. So we just want you to know that we stand with you in the support of issue six. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> Heather Atkinson. State your name and address for the record. Heather Atkinson, 518 Oak Street, Dayton, Ohio. You may begin. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor Whaley and members of the commission. My name is Heather Atkinson. I'm a resident of Dayton, and I'm also here today on behalf of IUE CWA, an organization that represents working people across Ohio. We want to thank you for bringing forward this resolution today. As an organization that represents workers, the issue of fair wages is extremely important to us, and we wholeheartedly support the call for an increase in the federal minimum wage to $10.10 an hour. Workers who are represented by unions have the benefit of a collective bargaining agreement, which allows them to work with their employers to secure fair wages and safety standards on the job. Many of our members work in the manufacturing sector, which provides some of the most stable, good-paying, middle-class jobs in our state. We also know that unfortunately, the vast majority of workers in Ohio do not belong to a union, and their wages reflect this. As we have seen union membership decline in recent decades, we have also seen a decline in real wages in the erosion of our middle class. 
There are thousands of workers across Ohio who make the state's minimum wage of $7.95 an hour. The vast majority of these individuals are not high school's kids working their first job. In fact, the average age of a minimum wage worker is 35, and one third of minimum wage workers are over 40. Many are parents trying to raise a family and make ends meet, and many are falling further and further behind earning these low wages, as we just heard from Mercedes. This issue of fair wages is also very important to me as a woman. Nearly two thirds of minimum wage earners are women. A disproportionate number of women in the workforce hold the lowest paying jobs, a fact that contributes to the gender pay gap. This means that women are far more likely to benefit from a wage increase, such as raising the minimum wage. In addition, 60% of women are the primary or co-breadwinners in their households. More money in their paychecks will mean more money for their families. Raising the federal minimum wage means supporting working families here in Dayton and across our state. The benefits are clear. Over 1 million people across Ohio would see a raise in their paycheck. Over $2.1 billion would be circulated in the Ohio economy, and 23% of Ohio kids would see their parents get a raise. Thank you again for bringing forward this resolution today and for calling for a raise for the millions who need one in Dayton, in Ohio, and across the country. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Eck. Mm -hmm. That's all, Your Honor. Commissioner's okay. comments? No, I'd just like to um, uh, thank those who have taken the time to come down this morning and, and talk about this very important issue. I know when I spoke at the, uh, the meeting that was uh, chaired and sponsored by the organizing collaborative and uh, former Mayor Clay Dixon, um, I really enjoyed myself in speaking and um, listening to the comments from others uh, about how important it was. So again, I thank you for coming out and, uh, and sharing that information again. Mayor, you know, the, the, the two <coughs> points that I want to make, uh, our speakers have already brought up, and I appreciate them doing that. Uh, the first is uh, to sort of poke a hole in some of the myths around the minimum wage. Uh, Ms. Ackes had just mentioned that the average age of minimum wage earners is 35. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that can't be said enough. The other the point that I really want to make is that uh, even if the federal government managed to raise the minimum wage to 1010, as we're going to recommend, that uh, that, that's not uh, outside the bounds of where minimum wage has been in the past. What it does is put it back to where it was in the mid-60s. Um, and people look back on that time as a period of economic growth. Um, so what's wrong with trying the same thing again? I think it's, uh, it would be good for our citizens and very good for the country. Money gets into the hands of folks who will spend it, uh, as another one of our speakers right. said. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the right thing to do. And I want to thank mm -hmm. the folks that came out to, to support it. I can mention that... Uh, we also have, have, a, have a living wage here in the city of Dayton that was created back in the 90s. Um, that's important to, to remember. I, I, let me also ask the city manager, um, have they been able to kind of uh, update that, that living wage? Because uh, it was kind of tied to, I think, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, I believe, if I recall. Uh, Commissioner, but, uh, I'm not exactly certain where we are. We've talked about that. We'll get you a report back on that. That's a good question. Okay. Uh, but to, com to Commissioner Lovelace's point, <coughs> I was pretty sure you would bring up the living wage as it's one of your um, cornerstones of your legislation. That wage allows anyone that's working for the city or being a contractor to the city to receive a living wage, which is actually, I know it's higher than the $10.10 that we're asking the federal government uh, to pass across the country today. And so uh, I want to share with you, Commissioner Lovelace, mm -hmm. that I did send that to the Obama administration and they're using it as a best practice across the country to show how cities um, and communities have worked on on these kind of issues and so even today you know 15 20 years later it's still relevant and important so appreciate mm -hmm. your leadership on that I'd also like to make the point I appreciate uh, everyone coming forward on the informal resolution and I'm glad that they're uh, sending those uh, uh, cards to Congressman Turner we'll be sending this informal resolution on to Senator Portman Senator Brown and, Sen and Congressman Turner as well mm -hmm. but there was a story in the Bloomberg Business News uh, about a month ago that talked about the wage amount and what should the, the minimum wage be and and 80 percent of economists according to that story called that the, the wage should be around ten dollars and ten cents for the minimum wage uh, and so you know not only is it the right thing to do because of the the gender pay gap and and, and the work of uh, folks having to work two jobs and still having to receive subsidy. Not only that, but also we know that it's the best practice for our economy and actually will grow uh, America's economy. So, you know, this is one of these examples, I think, that make a lot of sense across the board but have become strife with partisanness that's really unnecessary and really is holding the country back. So I think we're really glad, as, as usual, to be 
uh, stating our position on it. We certainly appreciate the town mm -hmm. hall put together by the organizing collaborative. I heard uh, Commissioner Mims did a fantastic job for us, and we're always glad that he did, and we're glad to be supporting this. So, no further ado, Ms. Lavender. Okay, mm -hmm. we can move forward with the calendar items recommendations. May I have a motion to move uh, to approve the city manager's recommendations? So moved. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the city manager's recommendations. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, legislation. First reading, emergency ordinance number 31309-14, authorizing the submission, acceptance, acquisition, and purchase of 45 properties from Montgomery County, Ohio, and the subsequent disposition of those properties in connection with the real estate acquisition program REAP and declaring an emergency. Your Honor, ordinance number 31309-14 being declared an emergency. I move for its immediate passage. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency ordinance number 31309-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Second reading emergency ordinance number 31309-14, authorizing the submission, acceptance, acquisition, and purchase of 45 properties from Montgomery County, Ohio, <coughs> and the subsequent disposition of those properties in connection with the real estate acquisition program REAP. Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. First reading emergency <coughs> resolution number 6031-14, approving the statement of services to be furnished to the property owners of 2875 Needmore Road when it has been annexed to the city of Dayton, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Your Honor, uh, being declared an emergency, uh, I move for the approval of item number three, excuse me, 603114. Second motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency resolution number 6031-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Second reading emergency resolution number 6031-14, approving the statement of services to be furnished to the property owners of 2875 Needmore Road when it has been annexed to the city of Dayton, Ohio. Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. Second reading emergency ordinance number 31304-14, amending section 42.01 of the revised code of general ordinances relating to the Department of Building Services and declaring an emergency. Now, ordinance number 31304-14, been declared an emergency, I move what's made a passage. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency ordinance number 31304-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. Second reading emergency ordinance number 31306-14, repealing section 48.01 of the revised code of general ordinances relating to the Office of Public Affairs and declaring an emergency. Your Honor, ordinance number 31306-14 being declared an emergency. I move for its immediate passage. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency ordinance number 31306-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. Second reading emergency resolution number 6028-14, objecting to the renewal of liquor permit number 13605670005. Cell Block Inc. doing business as Cell Block 135 East 2nd Street and Patio, Dayton, Ohio 45402, and declaring an emergency. Your Honor, being declared an emergency, I move for the approval of resolution number 6028 14. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency resolution number 6028-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims? Aye. Second reading ordinance number 31307-14, authorizing the use of Barker Street right away for flood control. Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioner Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims. Aye. Second reading resolution number 6030-14, approving participation in a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan in conjunction with the Montgomery County Office of Emergency Management. Mayor Whaley? Aye. Commissioners Lovelace? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Mims. Aye. Informal resolution number 885-14, supporting an increase in the federal minimum wage to 1010 per hour. Um, 
I, I move for so we support resolution number 885-14. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and second to approve informal resolution number 885-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that concludes the legislation, Your Honor. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we have a board appointment today, commissioners. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your Honor, I move to appoint Jacqueline Mays to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a term ending June 30th, 2015. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve uh, Ms. Jacqueline Mays to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a term ending June 30th, 2015. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Fantastic. Ms. Lavender, are there any citizens registered to speak? Your Honor, we have one citizen that is registered to speak, and at this time, I would like to state there is a three minute time limit. As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record, and at that time, I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have the three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on, then you will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you'll be asked to cease your comments and to take your seat. I call forward Gary Leitzel. <coughs> Gary Leitzel, 114 Vulcan and Avenue. You may begin. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioner, City Manager, Clerk. On January 22nd, I stood before you expressing my concern about the ballot language associated with Issue 6, the income tax renewal levy for a half percent income tax on those people who work or reside within the City of Dayton. I'm still concerned that the public is not aware that the ask on May 6th for this permanent, or as you call it, continuous tax, I prefer to refer to it as a forever tax. I would like to commend the mayor for her article in last week's city paper, where you have uh, explained the details of the levy. I also understand that Commissioner Williams and the mayor were on WHIO a few Sundays ago explaining the details of the tax. Unfortunately, many residents do not read the city paper or watch TV at 11.30 on Sunday morning. I did see that the city website has a detailed explanation of the tax levy and kept it to 11 lines, and I printed that here. However, I got this flyer in the mail a week or so ago, and I consider myself to be somewhat educated, and I read the thing in its entirety. I then realized that it told me absolutely nothing about the important issue that you expect me and thousands of others to vote on on May 6th. The sad news is I am knocking on thousands of doors to get the 1,852 valid signatures needed for an independent to run for county commissioner. I have probably knocked on 10,000 doors to get 1,000 people to answer. Very few are happy with this because they do not understand that the tax is forever. Like me, they are not so much alarmed about the renewal of half a percent, but they have no way in future to hold elected officials or government accountable for their actions or possibly inactions. After all, even school levies have end dates. I have no clue if you intend to mail another one of these out, but the least you can do to protect yourselves from citizens having buyer's remorse after May 6th when they discover that this is a permanent and they feel misled is to pay $12 for a URL and print a line on here that reads, for more information, go to www.renewdayton.com or org or net. If you actually Google issue 6 Dayton, nothing good about it appears. I would recommend that you check that out. Um, on a side note, I did notice that ordinance number 31305-14 and resolution number 6029-14 pertaining to the priority boards and the community engagement strategy were not, on, were not on this week's agenda for a second emergency reading, and I'd be interested just, you know, what happened and why they were pulled. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Leitzel. Uh, I'll respond to the priority board uh, and citizen engagement point. We actually had the first reading last week. Uh, um, and we will be reading it next week, not as an emergency, but it will take the regular amount of time to then pull in. We wanted all commissioners to be present for that vote. Commissioners, do you have any comments? Nope. Uh, Mr. Reardon, <coughs> do you have any comments? Uh, I have one that uh, Commissioner Williams asked if <coughs> we would call up uh, Human Relations Council Director uh, Katie Crosby to discuss this weekend's activities that the HRC is sponsoring. Ms. Crosby? Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, and City Manager. I'm actually going to ask Erica Fields and Sean Walton to come up to talk about this weekend's activities. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, 
This weekend, we have a unique opportunity to host the Dear Dr. Hip Hop Speak, Be Heard, Be Considered, which is an annual event. Um, Dayton has a unique opportunity with the um, police department to partner with the city of Trotwood Police Department and Montgomery County Sheriff's Office to um, <coughs> join in an initiative called the Community Initiative to Reduce Gun Violence. And so we've been working really hard over the past year to create safer communities. And one of our outreach events focuses on young adults, and that will be held this weekend. Um, we're partnering with Wright State University, uh, Blinga Black Cultural Resources Center, to use hip hop as a tool to speak out against gun violence and use it as a change agent, agent to encourage young adults to be, become active in the community. So we're opening the weekend up with Thursday, which is a screening of a locally produced uh, documentary on gun violence. It highlights the impact of gun violence and also um, things that are be done, being done in the community to create safer communities. Um, and we are highly anticipating Friday, which is the culmination of our grand, uh, grand Slam that we've been working with high school students throughout the city um, to speak, to be heard, and to be considered as it relates to their concerns about what's going on in the community. So we are really looking forward to that. The students have been working really hard um, over the year and really want to hear um, we were really would like to hear your feedback on what they have to say. And that will be taking place at Sinclair Community College in the Great Hall building. And then we're ending the event on Saturday um, with a lecture in hip hop, um, I'm sorry, lecture and panel discussion to really get to the root of what are some of the issues that young people are facing in the community and how can we address some of those concerns. And that will also be taking place at Sinclair Community College. Wonderful. I guess uh, we'll say it by my colleague Erica. Um, one of the things that will take place on Saturday is uh, we have some folks, um, of course the old school, not that anyone here is old enough to remember these individuals, but we have uh, old school uh, hip hop artists Chubb Rock and Dana Dane, and they've had enough experience to watch how hip hop has evolved and how it began as an anti-violence message actually. And uh, you know, to have some discussions on how they can motivate young people and new artists today and um, um, you know, young adults. Uh, to take back that art form and to use uh, that language that so many of our young people are listening to right now that literally shapes an entire generation of, of young people. So we just uh, appreciate your support. Thank Wonderful. You. Okay. Well, thanks. I think yeah. this is a great growth from was mm -hmm. la first, last year, the first <coughs> year, really, for Speak, Be Heard, Be Considered. And it was, it was the first year we partnered with Wright State. Right. We actually brought in artist MC Light. Right. MC Light was here last year, and I yeah. think it was mm -hmm. a great success, and I just like how you're growing it. and figuring out ways and aligning with the Poetry Slam. I think there's a lot of great things going on, so this is a great weekend for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, now what time on Friday and what, what's the cost? Um, on Friday, um, we are starting the Poetry Slam at 8 o'clock, doors open at 7.30, and that again is at Sinclair um, Community College in the Great Hall, Building 12, and tickets are $5. $5? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, adults as well as young adults? I'm sorry. For adults and as well as young adults? It's for, it's for the entire community. For the entire community. Yes. Okay, great. And, and, and there, there's no charge to on the Saturday event, and there's also no charge for the documentary at the RTA Cultural Center. All right. Commissioners, any questions? No, that's good stuff. Thank no, you. Thank, thank, thank you, you for what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I had, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Reardon. <coughs> Ms. Lavender? The finance briefing work session will be held at the conclusion of the meeting in the city manager's large conference room. Commissioners. Oh, thank you. Commissioners? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, the mayor for attending the 47th um, annual Botillion Militaire at the convention center this past Saturday evening. Uh, great affair, uh, great organization. And thank you for your attendance. And also to mention the uh, debate contest at Thurgood Marshall uh, this Saturday from 12 to 2, Thurgood Marshall High School from 12 to 2, in which uh, the mayor and I will be attempting to judge the uh, contest to um, see what additional lawyers and judges we may uh, stimulate from this community. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, thank mm. you. Thank you, Commissioner Mims. You did a great job. Uh, Commissioner Mims, as we all know, is the drill master for the Botillion and uh, really shaping young men's lives and uh, doing great work by walking the talk there. So it was a, a great event, great celebration. Thank you. You're good, Commissioners? Okay. Well, I want to make a couple of comments. Last Monday, we applied with the City of Cincinnati and uh, Cincinnati Chamber and Dayton Development Coalition for our manufacturing application, IMCP. Uh, which, uh, as you all remember, that we'll, there'll be 12 communities chosen. Uh, we've here like 42, 42, 44, 44 
uh, com communities have applied, and so we should hear about that response by mid May or June. Just really appreciate the support of the city, uh, support of the coalition and uh, Senator Brown and Portman both support our application, and uh, uh, we're just really excited about moving forward on that. And I wanted to thank uh, Ariel Walker from my office and, um, and the staff at the coalition for making that happen in like 40 days, which is a great turnaround <coughs> for that many counties. So we're really excited about that. And then yesterday I had the opportunity to spend the morning at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base with Colonel Barlow, uh, speaking and listening more to uh, folks about some of the great education work that they're doing to partner with DPS and other schools across the region next Wednesday. I think they'll be coming in to give a, uh, some of the really great work that they're doing in partnership and then getting to speak to some of the folks that have been recently deployed and coming back and the challenges that and opportunities they have coming back in the community and you know just what a great asset we have for our community at Wright Patterson uh, is shown over and over again and finally I want to thank Mayor Dixon's support of issue six we have um, uh, been in the process in addition to Mayor Leitzel's points about being on HIO and talking about how it's a permanent uh, income tax it's also been on the front page of the Dayton Daily News with a headline that says City Hall wants to make this permanent uh, so we've been pretty open about about that position um, uh, you have 13 days to vote in this primary, and so I want to remind people that they can still vote early this election at the Board of Elections uh, uh, if they want to walk in, but voting is way, way down across the state, and so we're really asking people to vote for both Issue 1, which is the OPWC, Ohio Public Works Commission, that this, the City Commission has endorsed mm -hmm. that helps us get money to take care of our bridges and roads, and it's very important statewide, and then also to vote for Issue 6. And so I uh, appreciate uh, Commission, uh, Mayor Dixon's support, and the organizing collaborative support as well as the NAACP that endorsed it this Monday and the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. We've had great support across the city. Remember, it is the same amount since 1984, since when Mayor Dixon probably uh, <laughs> uh, put it into place. <laughs> same amount. Uh, it's uh, the same same amount of money. And we're just asking for you to help uh, help support the good city services that, that our folks provide, whether it be police, fire, public works. Uh, these, these are the $22 million that will really provide the jobs to, do, to help the frontline services and really make the frontline services keep on going. So appreciate, uh, appreciate the support from the organizing collaborative. If there's no further business to come before the city commission, thank you.